Imagine a platform where decentralized finance isn't just a wild ride, but a carefully navigated journey. Picture a blockchain that goes beyond the chaos, embracing grown-up DeFi. Well, today we are diving into the world of Kujira. Kujira, also known by the market ticker Kuji, is a layer 1 blockchain created to provide sustainable financial technology or fintech for the often turbulent Web3 landscape. At its core, Kujira plays into what they have dubbed grown-up DeFi, offering sensible and sustainable financial products and smart contracts that allow for speed and security in the otherwise chaotic world of decentralized finance or DeFi. I know it all probably sounds complicated, but keep watching, because by the end of this video you will know what Kujira is, how Kujira works and what the tokenomics of the Kuji token are. As a reward, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Kujira is a semi-permissioned layer 1 proof-of-stake blockchain built using the Cosmos SDK that aims to bring sensible, sustainable fintech and DeFi applications to the Cosmos interchain. Don't worry, I will come back to what that all means shortly. Kujira was created in 2021 by Brett, Dove and Hans, not their real names. Regardless, Brett acts as a central front-end developer, Hans as the central back-end plus smart contract developer, and Dove is the CEO and public face of the project. As part of the Cosmos interchain, any smart contracts written on Kujira can work seamlessly, instantly, and cheaply with all the other independent blockchains on the Cosmos network, which currently sits around 50 blockchains. But to really understand how Kujira works, we should probably first go over some definitions. Starting with the word semi-permissioned, as in semi-permissioned blockchain. To help us understand, a permissionless blockchain allows you to create smart contracts without seeking approval from the network's nodes. Crypto nodes, just to be clear, are computers that participate in a blockchain network, maintaining and updating a copy of the distributed ledger of transactions. As Kujira is semi-permissioned, it means it is open for anyone to build, create and attempt to distribute apps, smart contracts or new fintech on their network. However, before it goes live, it is checked to ensure its quality. This is where the semi-permissioned comes. It is open to everyone, but that doesn't mean just anyone can launch something on their network. This is grown-up DeFi, after all. Moving on, we have Layer 1. Simply put, a Layer 1 platform is the foundation on top of which applications are built. An easy example, Ethereum is the Layer 1 platform of its network, but projects like Optimism are Layer 2 projects, as they are built on top of Ethereum with one specific task, in this example, to help Ethereum process data. Next, we have Proof of Stake. Proof of Stake is a consensus algorithm in blockchain networks where validators are chosen semi-randomly to create new blocks and confirm transactions based on the amount of cryptocurrency they hold and are willing to deposit as collateral. Subsequently, we have got the Cosmos SDK. To summarize, the Cosmos SDK is a framework for building decentralized applications and interoperable blockchains. Essentially, you can think of the Cosmos SDK as a library of pre-built crypto parts allowing developers to easily, quickly and simply bring their projects to life. Projects built using the Cosmos SDK are interoperable with all other projects created using the Cosmos SDK if they have the Interblockchain Communication Protocol or IBC enabled. If the IBC is enabled, the platform can access the interchain, which is a collection of independent layer 1 blockchains that can fully interact with any other blockchain on its network using Cosmos as a hub for communication. 
Lastly, we have Tendermint. Tendermint is a Byzantine fault tolerant or BFT consensus algorithm and software that provides a secure and consistent way for distributed nodes to agree on the order and validity of transactions in a blockchain network. And just for clarity, the Byzantine fault tolerance is a property of distributed systems that enables the blockchain to maintain consensus and operate reliably even when some nodes in the network are faulty or malicious. However, as I have spoken about Cosmos projects and proof of stake previously, I will leave some links in the description in case you would like to learn a little more next. Now that we know what Kujira is and how it works, let's find out what makes Kujira unique. What makes Kujira unique is that at the heart of its platform, there are four key applications, Fin, Orca, Blue and Finder. All of these serve a specific purpose which helps users take advantage of the various income earning opportunities found when trading in DeFi. To break that down, FIN is a decentralized and permissionless token exchange on the network. Unlike typical networks, Kujira has removed inflation incentives and bots which ultimately keeps the network fairer and cheaper for its users. Next, Orca is the world's first public marketplace for liquidated collateral which also allows users to easily liquidate multiple assets at once. Moving on, we have Blue, which acts as the control center and dashboard for the Kujira network. Here you can stake, vote on governance, swap assets, bridge assets to other platforms and claim any network rewards. Finally, we have Finder. In short, Finder makes it easy to conduct market research by allowing users to track addresses, validators and more. But how about the tokenomics? Like most proof-of-stake tokens, Kuji can be used for all the classics like paying, network fees, staking and governance. In total, there were originally 150 million Kuji tokens, though this has since been reduced to around 122 million after voting by the community. The distribution was broken down as follows. 27 million went to the team and 7.5 million to advisors behind the project. 28 million was sold in private sales and then 21 million in public sales. Of the remaining, 6 million went to the liquidity funding, 11 million towards operational cost, 6 million to marketing, half a million in airdrops, 7 million to the treasury and finally around 8.5 million in rewards. Originally, these were released slowly over time, though the remission schedules have now all finished and all tokens are available for sale on the marketplace should the holders wish to sell. Kujira wants to make DeFi sustainable and fairer for its users by bringing sensible and sustainable fintech to the emerging world of Web3. Although I cannot predict if Kujira will be the platform of choice for DeFi in the future, what I can say is if DeFi is to become more successful over time and scalable enough to adopt a planet's worth of people, we are going to require by necessity some grown-up DeFi. Though, of course, nothing is guaranteed in crypto. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video on Kujira, I believe you would like the video on Aave and Care Finance.